<sighs> Here we go. You're listening to Squatch Talks Podcast. Real stories and real encounters told by real researchers. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Squatch Talks Podcast. How's everybody doing tonight? And thanks for squatching. Thank you. And <laughs> thanks for subbing and liking. And if you don't mind sharing. sharing, okay. Thought we'd get that right out into the beginning. Because, uh, you know, you might not be sticking around till the end. I'm, I'm right. Thinking, so that's in why the I think, event. Go ahead. I think that's why we don't get any emails. at Squatch Talks Podcast at gmail.com. Right there. See? And yeah, if you have some comments, we appreciate that. That helps us grow the channel. So comments, likes, shares. Questions. It's going to come right out and ask for it right in the beginning. Please. Oh. <laughs> We're so, having fun. Help us have fun. And it is fun. Having a great time. And tonight we have a couple of ladies joining us who are uh, going to be even more fun because we haven't had the pleasure of hearing their stories yet. So That's one, right. one I know personally because she came on on our expedition in the Pine Barrens, her and her husband, um, yep. and then we has become a researcher, an investigator. Yeah. Yes, we've badgered her into the whole deal. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Nathan and I are celebrating one year of podcasting, so we're proud of that. Thanks for sticking around and uh, tuning in. And Tolerating at- us. If you if you remember last week we had on Tyrell, one of the Yeti brothers. Yes. Excellent sh- story. Fun time. That was great. So we're gonna hopefully have our Squatch Talks podcast bar available soon at Yetibars.net. So and don't, don't forget. forget to subscribe to Yeti Bars on YouTube too. Watch him make the soap. That's really interesting to watch him make and all cool. that stuff. Yeah. And use STP10 in the checkout. Mm-hmm. You put in that code, he'll save 10% on your order. So, isn't he giving away like $3,000 this month? 3000 yeah, $1,000 to three people, three different subs. So, That's if you right. go and you know, sub their channel, and uh, I don't even think you have to place an order. Yeah, but well, I, so. I just I found it again and subscribed because I don't know why I didn't do it the first time, unless I was logged in as someone else. Well, maybe I'll get a thousand dollars. That'd be nice. <laughs> so, I uh, was saying we have two ladies joining us this evening, and we're going to have them come on to the program with us in a moment. We're going to hear some interesting stories tonight from right. They're two uh, women from Vermont, correct? And uh, they're part of the Taps family from Ghost Hunters. Aha. So we're going to have some paranormal activity as well. That's right. Welcome to the conversation, ladies. We're happy to have you here. And as I just said a moment ago, Nathan and I are happy to welcome Karen from Vermont and Betty as well. And uh, Karen's an investigator who uh, came on one of our earlier expeditions in the Pine Barrens with her husband. And I think that gave him the Bigfoot bug. But she's actually a paranormal researcher as well. So we thought it'd be fun to have uh, both of them on as guests to share some of their exciting stories from some of the research they've done. So Karen, would you like to begin by introducing yourself? Sure, absolutely. I'm Karen Keen uh, from Stowe, Vermont, and have been with Paranormal Investigators of New England, I think since about 2011 and have been assistant director, case manager, and now have just stepped back a little bit to investigator with some of the travel I've been doing. Um, And then in addition to your expedition that I went on, I attended Southern New York with Brian. So loved it. Talk about pushing me outside of my comfort zone. It was awesome. That was quite an expedition though. It was. Now we gotta come ready to go on one. That would be nice. Why don't you take a moment, Betty, and introduce yourself then? Okay. I'm Betty Miller. I'm the Director of Paranormal Investigators of New England and, again, out of Vermont. Uh, I've been around um, since 2008, shortly becoming the director after joining. Uh, We do cover cryptozoology and ufology. 
And of course, all things that go boo and bump in the night. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I've known Karen for a long time. Uh, she joined shortly thereafter. Uh, great investigator. But um, we have had a couple of reports within Vermont um, of this of uh, Bigfoot sightings, uh, though mostly we end up with more of the uh, spirits, ghosts type paranormal activity in this area. We're a small state, mm -hmm. so um, that's it in a nutshell. But uh, cool, that's who I am and where I'm from. Nice. Well, I uh, I don't know, uh, you know, who wishes to to begin by uh, sharing some of some of the past experiences you may have had, but um, you know, we've we've been talking a little bit on our channel about you know various paranormal experiences that we've you know both experienced over the years, and in fact, uh, last week even I think we shared a couple of things more paranormal than Bigfoot, right, right. right. Um, even my wife, Heather, was talking about some stuff that happened in her house, um, and I shared about a, an event when I was a kid. So who would who would like to share a story with us? I'll let Betty go first. <laughs> 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 well, um, well, I can tell you of an area in Vermont that is of, of interest is Westford, Vermont. Mm. Uh, we actually... Um, had been to this client's house for other paranormal reasons in the past. And uh, they own a great, they own a farmhouse and they own a great deal of field and then woods. It's private. Nobody goes on it. It's posted. They know who's there and who's not. And, and there's no traveling on it. And they had gone up into the woods and discovered some of the typical things that you see the almost lean-to type structures with the the heavy uh logs and a, and a t shape um we uh, there was actually several of those and there was no rhyme or reason that you know nobody would be in there uh we went up and we found footprints uh the the director at the time i was brand new to the team and he did a cast of a footprint and um it was it, it i was being fairly new to the team it really took me back a back of you know the this is actually right here this close of vermont i didn't expect it and i didn't expect it that close to a town but um that was incredible it did uh there was a lot of rain after we took the footprint so of course we lost we lost uh prints uh, thereafter when we did go back, but the structure stayed there for a while. And uh, we have been back since, and we have not seen the structures years later, but um, it was it was exciting. And that opened my mind more. I was always a little more closed-minded to Bigfoot when I first joined way back in 2008. It was so like, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I can believe in ghosts and spirits and UFOs, <laughs> but when it came to looking for something in nature, an animal that we don't aren't aware of, it is like I don't believe it, which is ridiculous. I mean, that's what you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why aren't you believing in animals and 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 uh, creatures that uh, that that were from you know long ago and perhaps are. Uh, coming in towards the commun community more, you know, it's just, um, but anyways, I've come around and now I'm in that whole scope of thinking, connecting the paranormal with Bigfoot. Like you, mm -hmm. we had talked about previously before the start of this, but um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it definitely has started connecting the dots, you know, and uh, yeah. it's, what, it's, uh, what, what, what did the uh, the people report? Was it just the structures and the footprints, or did they yes. hear that was that was all they had? Uh, there were also some noises, if I remember right, that they heard. Um, they didn't go up into the property too much; they were too scared of it. There was a lot of other things going on, paranormal wise. Mm. There were um, apparitions seen on their back porch. Uh, there was 
a grandfather and a grandson whose ashes were spread upon the hill that mm. led into the woods. And we think that might have something to do with it. That was years ago. But um, there was, it's almost a play paranormal playground. Uh, <laughs> we found other paranormal things going on after going and visiting to see the structures. We also went back for uh, another, uh, like a nighttime investigation. And it, mm. it ended up being a circus of events, which it's, it just didn't make any sense. Things that happened uh, to us that night that were um, non-Bigfoot related, but paranormal related. So uh, there's definitely, it's like it's like a whirlwind of activity there. Could you elaborate a little bit about some of the events? That... Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the um, director at the time, the founder of the team, Jeff, and I decided to that we would go up together in the dark um, into the woods with just flashlights, no weapons. Mm -hmm. This is a really bad idea too. And uh, we went up into the woods and uh, while other investigators stayed down below. And we went when we went up into the woods, we started doing audio recordings and and uh, we did a few and not, we didn't hear anything. And then Jeff said, he announced, okay, if there's anybody here that can hear us, you better make yourself known now because we're going to leave. Oh boy. And then, yeah. So um, then all of a sudden we hear these footsteps, crunch, crunch, crunch. It was bipedal. It definitely was. You can tell the difference between a deer and a two-step. Mm -hmm. And it was complete blackness. And when you have a flashlight in the woods, it does not spread the light like it does in a room where it bounces off the walls. It just... As you probably know, it just it just goes a single spot yep. without spreading out. So um, whatever was coming at us in this dense wood had no no flashlights or anything, and it had no problem walking or seeing it. It couldn't have because it was getting it was close to us, but it just it was just walking through everything. And I looked over at Jeff, and Jeff's eyes. Jeff is a ex wrestler, bounty hunter, and he's a tough guy. But I looked over at him and his eyes were as big as pies because he I looked over and he looked like an eight year old kid like. like that. <laughs> and we realized it was it was coming right. It was like right upon us. And we decided. We decided to make down into the through the woods and get down into the field because all of a sudden we turned into the hunted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like, oh, man, you know, we didn't bring weapons. We didn't we just weren't thinking. And so um, we get down into the lower field. And at the same time that we come down into the, the lower field, there's two investigators down there. One, they were both um, down by this shed that had no wind. It had windows, but there were no panes in it. It was like a little woodshed. And they were outside of it and we were trying to get their attention and say something at the same time they're like all excited because they both walked out of the shed and saw a, a head in the pain in the non-pain window looking back at them they both saw it they didn't talk to each other they wrote it down what they saw so they didn't influence each other but they it it was shocking to them, but there was no body. It was just the head. And at the same time, over at the other end of the field, there's an investigator all by himself. And he's seeing, he's hearing stuff going back and forth, but like it's, it makes a noise here. It makes a noise there. And it keeps, it's like taunting him. This is all happening at the same time. And everybody's trying to tell the story at the same time <laughs> that when we're all together and it was just, it was just, all so much it's so like it it just um and when i we i listened back to the tape and i still have it is this voice that very deadpan it's like it has no soul to it whatsoever it says i am here come back wow. full sentence very like wow. it has, it's, it's almost it sounds like a dead person talking and then um i listened to the rest of the tape for the rest of the night and it was like, interacting with us the whole night i would talk to jeff about hey did you see that um did you see that uh 
expedition program with so and so Josh Gates and and uh, oh I said is it was it Josh Gates and and on the recorder the guy says yeah he's answering my questions to Jeff <laughs> and so it's a, like this thing is just like messing with me all night wow and somehow it was right there I mean it was like so it's it just it, it, there just was a flurry of activity which which just it just it was messing our heads in in every fashion so and so we knew that the bigfoot activity or whatever it was was just above us as well i don't know what this thing was that came at us or who it was so wow, it, it so that it's just it was just an evening of like that's that's pretty incredible though crazy craziness you know it's just like did the world just flip on us you know <laughs> and you were up there with jeff up on the hillside doing edp i actually I up up the hill and then into the woods yeah yeah okay and just and saying and jeff's there like make yourself known wow and then and he comes at us and then it's i am here come back it was like i just Amazing. Freaked me out when I heard it. Yeah. That is definitely a flurry of different types of activity. Yeah, yeah was... it was, and it was, it was. I think it was thoroughly entertained by us, <laughs> and it was messing with us. And I think it's. I don't know what was going on, hmm. but um, yeah, it's a, it's a very strange location. You, you don't think those footsteps were Bigfoot related? You think they were? I do. Yeah, actually, I do. Oh, and that we had yeah. taken um, a casting. Uh, at the time, he was the only one who knew how to do it properly. I was new to the team. Okay. It. I don't know if he still has it, um, but um, I, I bet he does. He so there were track impressions, away. right? You yeah. You found some impressions. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, okay. very. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so ah. it's just like, so it just, you know, it's just one of those events in your life that um, makes you say, hmm. Yeah, and you don't forget, it just it just mm -hmm. hangs with you. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's happened to us where we're out looking for Bigfoot. And then there's events that transpire that we're like shaking our heads going, wait, that what the heck just happened? You know, and it, it's something we've been trying to explain as well. Like, where's the correlation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. It's sort of like, because, you know, I investigate as, as a regular job, mm -hmm. uh, non-paranormal. And um, you do this, um, you know, you look at um, a case that you have and you go, OK, is this is this single scope? Is this just a one time event mm -hmm. or are there other events like that? And you go, OK, there were other events like that. So there were other events of Bigfoot doing certain patterns. Right. So, you know okay, we got Bigfoot. And then you sort of like, okay, let's open it up a little bit bigger. What else does this? Oh, okay. Spirits, ghosts, they they disappear and reappear. They go invisible as they walk sometimes. They will move fast back and forth. So you're like, okay, let's keep opening this up. And what do we have? It's more of a holistic uh, right. presentation. Yeah. So like, okay, we just got our, our circle got bigger of investigations and so you just you start making those those connections and drawing the lines and so like there there's it has to be connected it has to be it's you know there's got to be there's just, there are too many correlations and too many events so um, well we're we're all connected somehow anyway so okay. there's there's no reason that that the spirits and and sasquatch wouldn't all be connected with us as well we're all connected to the earth. We're all connected to the everything, you know, energetically speaking. Yes, yes. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And one of our Absolutely. previous guests, if you recall, uh, Nathan Todd was talking, we were, we were, you know, talking about how uh, witnesses sometimes will be seeing a individual, a Bigfoot walking or whatever, and then they just disappear. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's been reported many times or tracks that they're following will just and, disappear yep. and mm -hmm. okay and and he brought up that maybe just like there's ghosts in the human realm maybe there's bigfoot ghosts and that just blew me my mind you know i just never considered that now you, you said you investigate ufos too 
Oh, um, us on our team? Yeah. Well, we do, but we don't get many people that think to contact a paranormal group for UFOs. They go right. to MUFON, they go to, you know, right, yeah. uh, BFRO maybe, but um, we're not their first thought. Right. I wish they were, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. But if, if there is a sighting in the area, there's nothing to say that we can't go and take readings or take interviews. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That definitely is something. And um, what's your theory with the connection with that? UFOs with, and paranormal or, or Bigfoot more. I, you know, I cannot wrap my head around it. And I know that there are too many times that we have that whole UFO sighting with Bigfoot, but I have a really hard time connecting the fact that he's an animal. Right. Even though we're animals, I get it, but I have a hard time to connect. I've always with... thought they probably are being abducted the same as we are, because why wouldn't they want to destroy it? experiment and probe a bigfoot you know if they're they're picking us up they and all those lights happening out in the out in the woods and stuff bigfoot's right. going to go over and check it out they they come watch us play guitars and sit around a fire and do weird shit so why wouldn't they go check out where all the lights are you know all right well that's always been my theory that they're just curious creatures and they come yeah. out they'll go oh no what the heck's that, you know, and look up in the sky and then somebody else, a person out there would see them looking up at the sky and think they came down from a spaceship, but. Right. So. Now, if we could get somebody who's been abducted by a UFO that witnessed, you know how they say Bigfoot. on UFO, <laughs> that like, who's the big furry guy in the corner? <laughs> that got probed by a, by a big, yeah. that would really tie. I can tell you. If, if I was an alien and I thought I was the probe of Bigfoot, I would be very brave, I can tell you. I'd have to think twice on that one. Yeah. I'd have to think twice on that. <laughs> Next thing you know, the little aliens are being launched out of the ship. So. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Back to Betty's story with that property, it's crazy. You know, she had such an intense experience with Jeff at that location. And we went back twice. So this was before I joined the team and I was chomping at the bit to get on to this property. And we did two, right, Betty? A night expedition and then a day one that I think Chris Noel might have joined us on that one. Um, nothing. It was so, you know, we could see what looked like maybe there were tree structures there at one point, but probably over time had just with wind and, and whatnot collapsed. But we were out all night long, and then we went back another day during the day, wood knocks, howls, you name it, and, and didn't get any responses. So it is interesting how same location, yep. but as the, the stars are aligned to mm -hmm. have these crazy experiences. And then, unfortunately, when we went back, you know, we didn't. I didn't have those experiences. Yeah, no. True. Well, it's funny that you were able to connect with Chris Noel, you know? Mm -hmm. and get him to come out with you on that i didn't I've know i've been he... out a couple times with chris he's mm -hmm. got a lot of interesting theories he's, he's interesting to listen to very well we were just Definitely. talking about him with the whole you know autistic squatch that absolutely right that they're almost like a savant like a or, yeah exactly mm -hmm. very um, interesting but yeah yeah no he's got some interesting theories and and that's what we were referring to because nathan asked me if i had anyone that i knew of that talks about these glyphs, you know, out in the forest. You know, we mm -hmm. talk about tree manipulations. And okay. um, he mentioned what, you know, are considered glyphs. And do I know anybody who believes that to be the case? And I said, well, yeah, I think Chris Noel is one who has, you know, documented some of these things. So can you explain what that is again? Well, that's, you know, those are like just sticks that are kind of laid on the ground, either in a certain manner, okay, okay some type of primitive design it could be like a pinwheel type of design okay. also so that doesn't necessarily have to be on the ground i know chris has taken photos of pinwheel type manipulations okay. but with like smaller sapling type of trees you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so i just know that's one of the things he's talked about um 
The stuff yeah. I was looking at was just sticks, maybe two foot long or so, just set almost like hieroglyphics, you know, like uh, make it, not necessarily making letters, but making mm-hmm. a shape out of the sticks okay. to mm-hmm. mean something. Right. Uh, and there's different variations of the same kind of sticks in the same yard all the time. It's, it's you know, different. Yeah. And there's people who have reported, you know, to our database, of course, about certain finds that they've experienced with, you know, coming across like maybe at gifting sites or whatever, where they leave Mm -hmm. things out and they'll be gifted something in a specific, you know, fashion as far as the the way it's angled or whatever. And and one example I can give with that specifically is the BC expedition I was on, where Charles had gifted the uh, squatches a bag of organic apples. And the next morning down by his little tent by the pine tree was the, the pine needles were cleared in a circular manner and there was some rocks and a y-shaped stick pointing up towards the hillside and some fungus left right in that cleared you know two foot circle (laughs) and it's amazing you know i mean there was nobody else who did it that was on the expedition so those are things that you really have to say that they have some intelligence you know Mm -hmm. like they're thanking him for the the gift he left so I don't know. I guess I would consider that a glyph, Nathan, you know, because of the arrow shaped stick that was left. Hey, Karen, did yes. you, uh, did you uh, have something else besides that time out with uh, Betty? And uh, so I, only, I have not had a, a Bigfoot related paranormal experience per se. I've had paranormal experiences while mm-hmm. doing investigations and then also, personally, I've had a couple, you know, interesting things happen to myself. But the one um, story that I did, you know, not pertaining to me, but a, a close friend of mine named Matt Henderson told me this story right up the road from my house in Stowe that got me to thinking, you know, a little bit more about this paranormal connection. Because I think, really, I'm a flesh and blood girl. That's where my brain goes. But this story he told me, and I called him the other day just to hear the story again to make sure that I was going to get the, the facts right. And, you know, this is a big, again, big, tough guy. This is in the, what is called the ho- the hollow of Stowe, Vermont. So as the crow flies, maybe three miles from my house. And he told me that he was about five, six years ago. He was in bed. You know, the night wasn't too late, maybe 11, 12 at night. And it was summer windows were open so he could hear the sounds of crickets and frogs and all those noises that you know happened during the night he heard in the front part of his house maybe near where the driveway meets the road some kind of a hoot or a whoop he didn't know what it was and we all you know know in that area there's bears because we all deal with you know our trash getting taken down about every week and then you know, he would know, I think, the difference between an owl and this sound. But he said the first time he heard this hooting or whooping sound, all of the noises in the woods stopped. Mm-hmm. And that's got my attention because that's definitely, you know, one claim that has to do with Sasquatch. He said everything went quiet and he heard absolutely no footfalls. The sound moved its way to around to the back of his house, which is where his window was. And he heard at least four more of these sounds kind of moving their way across the back of the house. And then into the woods was probably the final mm. sound. Again, he, he called it a hoot or a whoop. Um, the last one, it's now, you know, worked, worked his way around the house through woods, no sounds of foot, no crashing, no crunching, mm-hmm. nothing. Obviously, a bear, you would hear that going through the woods. Mm-hmm. When the last hoop was made, all of a sudden, the sounds of the woods came back to life again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm trying to think, would, was that an owl? But we know the sounds of an owl when you live, you know, near 
the woods, you hear those sounds, but to have all the crickets, all the frogs, everything go silent. And he even said he jumped up and tried to look out the screen because it, he literally said, what the hell was that? Nothing. He could <laughs> so I thought that was interesting because here's a guy that wouldn't run up and tell anybody this story. And he felt it was something paranormal, but Bigfoot came to his mind. So I thought that was mm -hmm. a pretty Story. Hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, and and you hear that quite often with witnesses reporting, you know, sounds around their home. I know many, uh, many people who share stories like on other channels, even I've heard it many times where, you know, they're the woods go silent, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll hear something out of off the deck, or they'll hear it outside the window breathing, or whatever the case is. And and I've had witnesses reported to me as well where, you know, the sound moves around. And it's funny because often you don't hear the footfalls. Right. Like, like Betty and Jeff, they heard the bipedal footfalls up on the hillside that night, you know. And 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 there's been reports also where somebody will, like myself, have a therm in their hand and, and raise it up to their eye to look, and there won't be anything there. <laughs> and you're like, what the hell was that, you know? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that happened to us in New York, actually, when I was mm -hmm. up there in December in the wintertime. And we heard something come up on us and I lifted up my thermal and nothing was there. But I clicked off a couple of pictures and upon returning home and viewing them, there was something on the camera that was oh, really? shaped like a Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was crazy. So this That's whole, wild. it blows my mind because I'm a flesh and blood guy. I'm in that camp. But being out with Nathan and Brian and a few other people over the years, you know, it's gotten me to have to come around to i call it the dark side but uh <laughs> it's actually the light side but the light yeah. side <laughs> and so i keep an open mind you know but there's so many things that are unexplained and that's why it's great talking with people like yourselves who experience some of these strange the high strangeness as we call it you know mm -hmm. so Absolutely. but yeah that's a great story and yeah some knows? of the things yeah. some of the things i've seen my brother-in-law do and some of the things I've seen my daughter do with different things with uh, the dousing rods and the, stuff and the, and the remote viewing and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And just, it, it just, it blows your mind. And, and the, I've realized the more that you realize you don't know the the easier it is to realize something else is going on here because we really don't know anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 if you just if you just stop thinking you know what it is like it's flesh and blood just it might be who cares if it is or not just stop thinking it is and maybe then we'll figure out what it is and that's exactly. that's like i was saying earlier about how like betty was saying about how they were out there doing paranormal investigation yeah. but then it's kind of like hmm, maybe this has a connection with bigfoot right we've hmm. been experiencing the same type of thing where we're out looking for these individuals mm -hmm. and in turn we're having these strange things happening like time variants and and weird lights and ufos yeah. and other you know strange high strangeness that gets us thinking where is the difference and how do we differentiate yes. between the two right mm -hmm. so it's, yeah and you think of you know you, you talked to karen about um how it got quiet with bigfoot mm -hmm. uh you know when a bigfoot's around that's one of the patterns it's also with UFOs. So again, connecting oh, yeah. is another line from, you know, UFOs. I've, I've had an extreme UFO experience um, and, and everything went quiet. So that mm -hmm. um, there again is another pattern, you know, okay, this happens with this, this happens with this. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's just, there's one more connection. It's like the more you investigate to find answers, the more it opens up a can of worms, you go, well, that isn't the way it was supposed to go. I was supposed to get the answers. I wasn't supposed yep. to, like, it wasn't supposed to get bigger. And it just, that's the way it went. And yeah. I like how you pointed out, though, the investigators down below near the, the shack, right, mm -hmm. were taking notes. And they were they were documenting what they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. They're well-trained. Yeah. Yep. No, that's, They're well-trained to, like, wait. Cool your jets. I mean, they their their blood was a pumping, but they knew not to talk. Mm -hmm. They knew do not influence each other's head. You know, write it down. What exactly. did you see? 
Um, and, uh, and one of those, one of the investigators have since left the team, but one left, the other left, and then just recently came back, Jason Engel, which I'm so glad he didn't eat. He heads up the New Hampshire branch now, um, of our, the New Hampshire division of our paranormal investigators of New England. So he started off on his own branch of our team, but, um, they knew they were smart. And so like, okay, just keep you cool. This is the way things are done. Write your notes and then you read from your notes Mm because you don't say, oh, yeah, you know, the person, um, it was a, um, it was uh, somebody with, um, you know, big cheeks. And then all of a sudden the other person's like, yeah, maybe they did have big cheeks or something. So you can't, you don't want to do that. You want to say, you want to write it down and get the details all you can and then do a comparison because you don't feed that. And your paranormal group is the TAPS, right? Is that the acronym? No, we're not TAPS. We both, we're a family member of TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. Like an offshoot? Okay. They are, um, we... I just want to make sure people know where yeah, to, to look you Yeah, the no, um, we just are a subsidiary of TAPS. Uh, you know, Ghost Hunters and, mm-hmm. and Jason Hawes and all that group. They're, they are taps um and they did the show ghost hunters okay and then they got uh they got so many requests for cases all over the united states that they started getting um what's called taps family member teams like a franchise (laughs) yeah it's kind of and the cases that they can't um take on in those states they delegated to a TAPS sure. family member team. It is not easy to become a TAPS family member team. You have to, you know, there are a lot of things you have to, you know, be investigating for five years. You have to have, you know, references. There are things you have to go through. It's it's not an easy process. But Some hoops so, to, to jump through and there's certain qualifications, are. right? Yeah. yeah, because you you can't, um, you've, you've got to follow, you know, some kind of, you know, formal, protocol format and um very similar to the bfro yeah yes we have to be back on checked Mm -hmm. yeah yeah all that so um so it does speak volumes Mm -hmm. that we are subsidiary of them but we are our own entity and so it's the paranormal group of New England? I forget. Paranormal Investigators of New England. Investigators of New England. Paranormal Investigators PI dash N E dot org. Nice. Well, we'll make sure we have a link also in the (laughs) description for our viewers. (laughs) Yes, um, and join our Facebook. And be sure to like them and subscribe, as we hope they will reciprocate with us as well. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) I was just saying to Nathan tonight, hey, you know, we we need to start asking for people to like and share and subscribe in the beginning of the video instead of waiting till the end. Who knows if they're sticking with us till the end? Let's get that out of the way in the beginning. (laughs) They can only listen to us blabber about for so long and then they move on, I guess. We need to flash across the screen. How how many members of your subsidiary group are there? Yes. um, Well, our, our team... Um, is we have eight members to the Vermont, you know, area. Mm-hmm. we're in Vermont area, but um, we are, we are the kind of the mothership here, so to speak. <laughs> um, and then the New Hampshire branch has five members. So they take on cases maybe out of mass and, you know, of course, New Hampshire and uh, Maine. So they can cover that area because we do get That's... requests from, all over the yeah. northeast yeah we do so um, and it's funny because i always think of karen i always think new hampshire because of her last name but she's vermont right <laughs> yeah that's right, Team new hampshire. <laughs> right. you know so, i thing i was thinking about the other day is you know we have folks on our team that have extra senses mediums and sensitives and betty one good story to tell us the one where the investigation northern vermont we can never give away our cases where two of the members of our team had to draw the impression there was um something seen outside of this particular property this was a paranormal case but betty tell that story my my point is i wonder if people who might have extra sensory abilities are more apt to have a bigfoot experience because they can 
read that energy more mm-hmm. where I, I've never seen anything. I don't consider myself a sensitive, probably have had experiences one or two times where I've actually heard the audio, but you know, there's members of our team who see shadows, see an apparition can see with their third mm-hmm. eye makes mm-hmm. me wonder if folks that have those abilities might be more apt to be the ones to have a Bigfoot experience. If it That's is. That's a good question. What would a sensitive see? Would they exactly. see more? Would they, would they mm-hmm. sense it more? But tell that story, Betty, where the, t- was it Heidi and, and somebody, they drew the picture and the picture. Yeah. Well, Heidi. And at the time we had, um, a gentleman on our team named Mike, who who was he he was a um, sort of a licensed minister, and uh, they went out and tried to find the path because they both have intuitive energy abilities, and they tried to find the path of where big or not I don't want to say Bigfoot, but of this creature, this monster that had been seen by that had been seen by the clients. They are trying to find where it was coming in and going out. And, uh, and um, they did find the path and it was apparently Heidi saw it. And uh, she drew, had a drawing of it with a, it was a pulky, almost looked like the big, you know, Hulk, the, was it Incredible Hulk? And he had, big muscles and his arms were very very long and it was hairy and it his head went like down from the back you couldn't even tell it almost didn't have a it looked like it didn't have a head because it was down like that but from mm-hmm. the front it was just like it was just like down and walking like that um and they found a similar picture to it and i forgot what the name of the creature was actually but um so I I do wonder if there is a connection to that. And actually, Mike was be was able to tell the path and what when this creature came into the house because it actually was coming into the house. Oh, what wow. it came in through a window in the basement, and um, Mike knew. And Mike started like almost vomiting as he came up. He, he was so sensitive. He was like, you know, um, trying to trying to sense it almost like a dog it's, it was kind of weird because it's you know he was outside and he was vomiting as he was finding and he goes yeah it's the it's coming in through the window so in the basement wow. so he knew so that that really is a good question karen well, i know what happens when you put mediums and sensors out in an Crystal, area like that crystal's extremely intuitive she's uh my daughter she's really good with the tarot readings mm-hmm. uh she doesn't you don't even need to ask her the question she just gives you the cards you give the cards back and she'll give you the reading for the question that you have in your mind and it's she's right on every time and when we were in uh pennsylvania with that with the last expedition she was sitting with a a a group of i think it was all the women at the time and patty was with them and she was almost she was nauseous she had to move she said if we don't move i'm going to be sick They all got up. Everybody felt a little something, but she actually was nauseous. They moved 20 yards up the trail. She was fine. They turned around and got a thermal hit. So that is definitely, they they can feel the energy, I'm sure. And that's happened to her on more than one occasion. Yeah, Yeah, that's so, Mm. you know. Nathan being the, the the good father that he is, whenever she starts to feel a little nauseous, oh, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> yep. Both of them were like that, yeah. Nice, Dad. Yeah. Yes. None of the Dad, stories. I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, well, we're staying here. <laughs> yeah, none of it speaks well about my parenting abilities. Oh, <laughs> Uh, you're great. They're dad. still alive. I mean, I have a grandson, so I couldn't be doing too bad. So you did something <laughs> right. I just sorry. I had to throw you under the bus, Nate. I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, I can't wait to take him out in the woods too. <laughs> <laughs> He's the new bait. Yep. Maybe he wore bait. his first Bigfoot T-shirt. Yeah, a or two oh. ago. So yeah, yep. He's going to be a year old on the twentieth. So mm. yeah, he's he's chomping at the bit to go look for Bigfoot. 
Well, you're going to be the cool grandpa for sure. Very cool grandpa. Uh, yeah. He's the pawpaw. I'm pawpaw. Oh, yep. Papa. <laughs> Which we found out through another guest is the name of a, a type of plant down in West Virginia, right? The pawpaw patch. Oh, yeah. That's no, right. No. So yeah. now we'll have to think of uh, in terms of that next time. It's mm-hmm. actually a treat food for squatches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be a treat food for well, maybe. I don't... <laughs> I'll what tell you, we've go. we've had a lot of fun over the past year doing yeah. the show, and and you know learned a lot, and that's why we love having on guests like yourselves who can broaden our horizons and our mm-hmm. you know viewers, of course, as well. But there's there's things we just have yet to experience, you know. So hearing right. other people relate these encounters and stories may one day help us to put together some of the questions we have, you know, Mm -hmm. because we'll we'll experience like these red dots of light moving across and in our field of view and and be like, what the heck is that? You know, or people feeling like we call it being zapped when it comes to Bigfoot, like that nausea or fear or Mm -hmm. anxiety, you know, different headaches, sensations that may also arise from what we call infrasound. Okay. So that's one of the explanations we use in our research. Um, but yeah, who knows? It could be completely different. So we've tried using some of Nathan's brother-in-law Brian's gear. Right. We've got the REM pod. We've got the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've got the EMF, the K2, mm-hmm. is it? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Right. Yep. So we've been playing with some of this gear and uh, SLS we're at, cameras. Yeah. We're we're adding a uh, an infrasound meter to the, to the, to the kit. Yes. Nice. nice. So you really are blending the paranormal together. Yes. Indeed. You're bringing it together. That is fantastic. Yeah. Well, we yeah. figured too, if if the, like Crystal having the sensitivity toward the Bigfoot being there, it's got to be giving off some sort of energy. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's many times that the Bigfoot or the the witness, all the, all the batteries go dead in their equipment. Same thing happens when you're hunting ghosts too, you know, that they, they, they suck the power out of everything. So, you know, somehow there's, there's, it's related. So no doubt. And your brother-in-law also does remote viewing. Yes. And so I was talking, viewing. Yeah. I had a guest stop by before I went on tonight and we were talking about some of the Pinelands activity and uh, the subject of remote viewing came up. And I said that Nathan's brother-in-law is pretty spot on, you know, with some of the things he's picked up on yeah. some of our investigations we've been conducting um, with, you know, what he considers to be areas where they might be hunkering down or some of the things he told us about one of your witnessing encounters, Nathan, where the, the people were experiencing things and he was like, well, they're just not ready to make yeah. themselves known to you yet, you know, yeah. so give it some time, you know, mm-hmm. and who knows? These are all neat things to to incorporate into what we're doing, and and also, like yeah. I said to Betty, was like I'm, I'm impressed by how scientific you conduct your research, yeah. and the group knows to really you know make note of events and and specifics, mm. so that you can go back and review it and and you know yeah. put two and two together. You know, yeah. absolutely. So we just now have to do a combined expedition. Bring in That's, a parent team and you and go which out. Which we did up in New York on the Southern New York. Yeah, yes. that was expedition. First. We did an EVP session. We got yes. on the EVP session. Indeed, and that's a that that's place a where we did it. Electronic phenomenon for those who who do not know. Um, electronic, yes, voice phenomena, exactly. Right. Um, but we had some. You know, some strange events that transpired there. You were on the second expedition now that we've, you know, cleared that up. Cleared that up. Yes. Nathan was on the first one mm-hmm. and did a right. a paranormal, you know, uh, mm-hmm. night out, shall we say, where he had a pretty freaky experience, which, you know, yeah. unnerved him greatly. Well, we were doing the same thing. We were sitting in a circle there doing mm-hmm. an EVP session and, uh, Everybody kept going around the circle asking questions. And then Brian just said, if you're here, please make yourself, come in, known. <laughs> make yourself known and come into the circle. And I I had been looking out the circle. I, I sort of had my back, not to the circle. I was engaged, but I was still looking for Bigfoot. I wasn't really interested in the EVPs. It wasn't what I was there for. Right. 
And as soon as he said that, the shadow behind Patty stood up and walked across me. And wow. uh, it pretty much knocked me off my head. It, me it did. Chance. It knocked oh, pretty, really? pretty much really? knocked me right off my chair. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, just big black and it just came right across me. So what do you think Ooh. it was? I have no idea. A shadow person. <laughs> it was a shadow. If it was Bigfoot, I it was it was in pure energy. And it's the same spot that Brian had a, a an event exactly prior the to same the thing. expedition yeah. where something came rushing up on him that he couldn't see, but caused him to gasp, you know, and like mm-hmm. pick up his therm to look. And again, nothing. Yeah. So and I didn't and, even have a chance to look through my therm. I was I fell on the ground. Totally. Oh my wow. god. Yeah. Wow. And one of the other attendees was grabbed. Okay, and Mm -hmm. there was marks left on his leg. Yeah. Not at the same time, at a different time, but at the same place. Same place, yeah. Well, the thing is, there's spirits all around us. So if you ask for something to come forward, it's almost like a Ouija board. Yeah, you You don't know what you're going to get. Whatever, (laughs) (laughs) you just opened up everything. It's like, okay, it's a party here. So they're going to, you know, it doesn't doesn't mean it's just going to be big book. We we did a little bit of research, too. (laughs) Depending yeah. on where it's at, there there could be some uh, old Indian death things going on. It's in near, area. yeah. You're saying it's <laughs> near where there could potentially be some spirits from that time mm-hmm. frame. Yeah. But I'm curious when you go out and do investigations in either residences or hotels, things like that. Um, do you ever have the fear of bringing something home with you, or is there a way that you leave the energy behind? How do you go about that? Um, did you want to take it, Karen? Or sure, sure, sure. For me personally, I we do have um blessed crosses that we all keep. Maybe you, Mike, or you, Betty, gave them to us way back when that stays right in my parent act that goes on me uh mm-hmm. during an investigation. But I also set my intentions, um, and I kind of did the same thing before I went out in the woods. It, it puts mm-hmm. you in an uncomfortable position, but I go into it almost with armor as if to say, don't mess with me. You know, and I, I build up this mental, I like to call it like a mental muscle that I am not to be messed with. Cause we've been on cases where they've been a little bit darker. I tend to stay away from the ones that kind of go into that mm-hmm. realm, but you never know uh, if you're going to bring something home. Mm-hmm. And I do typically before I leave the building or wherever we are, before I get in my car, I, I say it pretty much out loud, do not follow me home, you're not welcome, please stay. Okay. But I had a case one time I investigated, back when I got started, which I started learning to investigate, I think it was around 2000, maybe around 2010 range, I went over to in New Hampshire, uh, Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson owned uh, an inn called the Spalding Inn, notoriously haunted location that I went there. They they would do weekends where you could learn how to do uh, investigating correctly, learn how to use the equipment, et cetera, and then get to investigate the property. Long story short, came back from that event. And I think, I, and Betty's been there too. We've probably been there, what, two or three times because we've had but are called TAPS family reunions there. But the second time I believe that I went, I came home and I felt my house was just different. Something, something wasn't right. And a couple of occasions I would catch a shadow out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, that's weird. And I kept seeing, I lived I, at the time, had a house in Montpelier as a Cape style house. I kept seeing where the TV was the stairwell was right to my left. And I kept seeing what looked like a little black shadow zipping around the stairs and going up the stairs. I didn't really say much. At one point, Dan, my husband said, something's off for the house. I'm like, thank God, it's not just me. Something is happening in this house. And I'm like, I don't know if I brought something home or what. So I just kind of ignored it. My cousin came to visit and she was sitting in the chair, it was late, you know, one evening, and she's sitting in the chair that I kept seeing the shadow. My back is to the stairs, so I'm on the sofa, and we're just talking. And all of a sudden, she looks at me, and she goes, and the look on her face, I said, did you just see something? 
And she goes, something just went up your stairs. I'm like, yes. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Not just me. Part, I want to go home. She was scared. But it's funny. I that Dan felt it. Then she felt it. I'm like, I brought something home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I, at the time, I didn't even think about sage. I do do that now, by the way. I probably sage, or usually now I use Palo Santo wood uh, once a month, roughly anyway, in my, you know, if we are actively investigating, but it's good to do anyway. You never know who you were going to encounter at like a Walmart, but um, I, <laughs> Walmart. Like, I didn't give any life to it. I just said, you know, please, you're not welcome here. And it just sort of faded away. And I feel like I've probably had that twice. Betty has better stories, but I feel like I've had that twice where some kind of off energy came with me. And I either, you know, combination didn't give any life to it. And also just said, you know what? You're not welcome here. Go. And then yeah. it just dissipated. dissipated. I have wow. some things you can do to your door that'll actually, as you walk through over the threshold into your house, it'll pull it off of you and make it stay outside the house. So I can, I can show you how to do that sometime. I need that lesson for sure. Okay. Uh, it's funny though, Karen, because I was going to ask you what Dan thought about all of this and how he felt about you potentially bringing something home with you. <laughs> You know, he it, it would make him nervous. It's funny, the, the paranormal world, he's used to it now. In the beginning, I think he was a little more worried about it. But we also kind of had the agreement that, you know, the, you know, Betty goes on a lot more intense cases than I do. So that girl, brave as hell. I, <laughs> because, you know, raising, of course, my kids are older now, 18 and 21, but I've been doing this. They were little. And so I just was always conscious of what kind of energy I would be bringing home. I 100% believe that, you know, yeah. you can encounter some dark stuff that can follow you home. And one of my biggest fears was have it affect them in, in some way. Yeah, which is um, one reason my wife, Heather, doesn't really, on one hand, she'd like to do the paranormal stuff. But on the other hand, she's hesitant because of that reason, you know? Right. But it's funny you mentioned you've been doing this since your kids were little, right? And Nathan and I both also started doing our Bigfoot research when our kids were little. And so when they were little, we always used them as bait. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's completely yeah. opposite. Like with you, yeah, you're like, exactly. keep them yeah. out of it. With us, we're like taking them out in the woods with us going, you know, tracing <laughs> around. Hey, look at We give them glow sticks and tell them to swing <laughs> them around. <laughs> Actively Giggle. Yell out them loud. in harm's way. Oh, I'll, I'll tell one more story and then I'm then Betty will um okay. will tell you what she does. I went so Mike, who's no longer with the team, the one that was the ordained minister, was deeply involved with blessing homes, clearing spirits. And I went to witness this because I never seen such a thing before. So I went with Heidi, who's one of our team members. And I went to this home that had definitely some, some not so friendly energy. And I'll never forget in a way I was used for bait that day because <laughs> there was a closet or it was kind of like under a stairwell where he believed this energy was contained. And he's like, do you want to go in there? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I went in there and I literally said out loud, don't mess with me. I'm saying the clean version. That's mm -hmm. not exactly what I said. <laughs> I there And, you know, waited for something to happen. Nothing happened. So Heidi went in there not long afterwards. Didn't really seem to, to really affect her. Her and I were, after that was done, Mike was continuing to do the house blessings. Heidi was standing next to me. I really didn't feel much going on. And the next thing I knew, she was, her knees buckled and I caught her. Wow. And somehow that energy decided to attach itself to her. I would never, if I wasn't standing there, I'm not sure I would have believed it. And Heidi's a tough girl. She's definitely sensitive. And that's mm -hmm. where I wonder if the energy went more towards her because mm -hmm. maybe it knew she could see it or feel it. I don't know. And maybe it just, Sometimes I say I'm ghost kryptonite, but she definitely, I watched her collapse and, and, and I caught her. And I thought, my God, and she had to sit down and recover. So there was some energy that zapped her. But I, again, back to what I do, you know, it's the don't mess with me 
umbrella. But and Betty I've, has her own tech, you know, techniques, I'm sure. I, yeah, I think I think we all do, yeah. Yeah, been I've been with you. I've even when we weren't out in the field being around you, you're a very strong willed person. You don't have anything weak about you. So there's probably not too much that'll attach to you. I don't think it even wants to try, to be honest with you. But, but yeah. Don't mess with her. Yeah. Don't F yeah. with don't you know, F with Karen. Don't <laughs> yeah, don't mess with you me. need that as a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Maybe that'll be the only thing good that comes of having the name Karen at, at this <laughs> place time. Don't mess with a Karen. That's right. Exactly. Now that's cool. Well, that that was definitely a question I had to ask because you know that's one of the things that kind of freaks me out a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I I have the sage and I smudge on the on the full moon usually if I'm gonna yeah. do a cleansing. You know. But, well, and you mentioned, uh, well, Betty, did you? The long you... drives after an investigation. So mm -hmm. see, we're investigating and it's, you know, two hours from the house. It's 2 a.m. You're in your car. <laughs> you <know? laughs> no I, doubt. I, I, that rear view mirror gets tilted right up to the ceiling. <laughs> I don't want yeah. to see anybody <laughs> sitting behind me. <laughs> no, I, crack, I, I, have a I crack the windows. I'm playing 80s music. And it's funny, <laughs> I live right near a very famous covered bridge that's haunted, Emily's Bridge. A lot of people know about Emily's Bridge. And I will go through that bridge all the time, back and forth, back and forth. But the, And it's funny, it seems wrong, but the night of an investigation, if it's three or four in the morning, I go around. I'm like, I, I just can't do it today. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't Not want to see it. Emily at this moment. But yeah, you know, we get wigged out too. But, oh, yeah. Doing the investigation outside in the woods was the most uncomfortable I have ever felt. I, I was, you know, that pushed me outside of a comfort zone. That at the location that Betty was talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, talking about investigating with you guys. Oh, um, <laughs> I think knowing that there's a giant bipedal creature potentially in the I woods can tear your arms and legs off. Yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, my spidey senses were all over the place. And thank and you. I've been into some. Some you know, pretty haunted homes, and this BFRO and Bigfoot investigating is certainly um, not for the faint of heart. Not at all, and and it's funny because Nathan has brought this up on a few occasions. Also, like you know, we enjoy doing the Bigfoot research and you know branching out to experiment with the paranormal, right? But how many times have you said, Nathan, that the paranormal is not really as exciting as Bigfooting? No, I, in that sense, I, you know what I mean. It, the more I think that the shadow guy thing was paranormal, the more I think it it, it could get exciting. Mm -hmm. But I've never been scared when we were doing anything paranormal. Right. Right. Even my daughter, even Crystal said she was a haunt actor at Penhurst in part of the haunted building, right? Uh -huh. And she still said being out in the woods is scarier than anything these ghosts are doing. Well, that Although, time that I had out in Westford, that was the scariest time. You know, it's it's all of a sudden you, you become yeah. you become the the um, the hunted, the prey, the hunted, and, yeah. and it's a whole different feeling because you know when you're in a house, yeah. you can always run out when something goes wrong, <laughs> and you're typically fine. Like yeah. if you leave the house, you're in go out front, you 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 feel like you've left that. But in the woods, you can't get out fast enough. And it's sort of no. like, okay, what's your plan? You came in to find a monster. Okay, so you find it. What's, what's your plan? You know, you, are you, what are you going to do with that? So, and, um, and you said about going in with weapons and stuff. I, I never, I tried to never ever have a weapon on me. So a what's your plan? With, uh, <laughs> a very bright flashlight is your best defense. Yeah. That's really the best defense against You got to throw it at him? <laughs> no, just shine it in his face. Yeah. And, and they go like this, and that gives you enough time to vacate the premises, you know? But yeah. that's really our best weapon against them. Um, Pick up a camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and they'll they'll get all there boring. you go. You want to get rid of Bigfoot, <laughs> put up a trail <laughs> camera. Yeah. Run fast. Yeah. Pick no, up a camera. camera. No, you, Betty, you have to have somebody you can run faster than. Yeah. yeah. That's the key. Because you're not going to outrun Bigfoot, but if I can outrun you, then we're okay. <laughs> I always said, actually, remind me not to go. <laughs> Larry Sidwell 
I've been on very, I've been on a lot of expeditions with him, and he always said, "If we see a Bigfoot, I'm kicking whoever's next to me in the knee and running, because <laughs> he can't run." <laughs> uh, he has his Plan B in place. Yep. I see. <laughs> yeah, he's kicking somebody in the knee. So That's- tell us um, anything going on currently? Any in- active investigations that you're working on? Um, well, there is. Um, well, actually, we have something going on in Plattsburgh, New York right now, but uh, uh, they do. They come in. Uh, typically, we have a, a downtime between just prior to Thanksgiving mm-hmm. to uh, mid-January, After which New is Year's. fine with me because, you know, people don't want us in their homes at holiday time. Go figure. Right. And we don't want to be doing them during holiday times because we have our family time. So it Absolutely. actually works out. It's, it's the perfect, you know, slow um, period. Yeah. 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 It's OK. And so uh, we'll be picking up again. We we do have one coming up now. Uh, and uh, with there are a old... couple in New Hampshire that I've got to go check out, um, actually, too, that I've uh, had an invite to go check out a couple homes there. But um, hmm. so they, they'll start coming in again. I would almost think the holidays would would drudge up some would stuff like things, like yeah. like some, you know, family members to miss the holiday or something, mm-hmm. you know. True. I guess that, well, I guess they, that's they thinking, may, and, but they, you know, yeah. they just don't report it until afterwards. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah, they just, you know, because we go through their closets, we go through every, you know, right. we're, we're invasive, you know, it's, and so, um, sure. it, it's, it's, uh, definitely something you don't want when you're trying, you've got a hundred other things going on, but then no they, doubt. especially spring, they start yeah. rolling in. Yeah, really... my, my wife's uh, family actually had an investigation done at their place. They had a paranormal really? team come in. So I got to see the final results, you know, the, the documentation that they had com- mm-hmm. compiled nice. with, with what they experienced. And yeah, so it's kind of neat to see how this goes down. And again, I never really had a personal attraction to doing that type of research. So it's mm-hmm. good to it's good to hear how other people go about doing it. And, uh, and we can learn from each other, you know. Good. That's what it's all about. Well, <laughs> if you're interested in going to really look for Bigfoot, I would like to invite you. We could do something small, just the four of us, or, or you know, Off a couple books. more. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, pick a spot somewhere, and you know, maybe centrally located, so you don't have to come all the way down this get, way. You get know your feet I mean? wet, that and would uh, be exciting. And then, be uh, maybe we could because uh, you have back to on say some ghost stuff, you know. I have to say, Bigfoot loves the ladies. Okay, Does so. <laughs> well, then I'm bringing more than a flashlight. That's, <laughs> that's the only part I have a hard time with. Is... It actually changes your demeanor, I think. We have a, a guest investigator who wants to say hi. There he is. Hey, hey. What's going on, man? How you doing? Good. Good How are you better. doing? Good to see you, Dan. Dan you loves squatching. We know. And and well, we're hoping a, we're hoping you'll you'll be willing to attend as well. You guys are awesome. Good to see you guys. Yeah, great to see you. How's that? You uh, how's that Squatch fire. edition? That Sasquatch edition Bronco coming along? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. My hey, trucks. Hey Betty, how you doing? Huh? Hey, good, right. good, good to see you. All right, I'm going to leave you guys. Enjoy your. And I hope to see you soon. You got it, man. Dan was a lot of fun on the Pine Barrens expedition. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. He's a fun guy. He is. So, but yeah, no, I, I just I enjoy, you know, Nathan and I do these periodically, these expeditions with the BFRO, and uh we enjoy taking new people out into the field and, and showing them how to go about doing this type of research. And and over the last two or three occasions, we've kind of expanded it a little bit to, you know, encompass some other activities like mm-hmm. ufos and paranormal you know what i mean so not necessarily in line That's with the perfect. bfro's uh guidelines but we're autonomous fits right into the squat <laughs> squat like that, I, I bring a whole yeah. wheelbarrow full of equipment with me behind me <laughs> there you go no doubt. look for the big guy ghosts and ufos all in the same yeah. well you're sitting there you might as well you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been out at you know satellite base camps hanging out where yes. we might not get 
zero activity Bigfoot wise. And I'll look up and I see a craft going across the sky. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's this bright flash of light, almost like an old camera flash bulb going off. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like looking up and then another one, a second one. I mean, this is, this is like with five or six other people out in the field. Wow. I love that. You know what I mean? And it's like, how else do you explain that? It's not the space, it's not the space station flying over, you know? And so, uh, and then you hear strange humming in the background, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? As you're getting ready to pack up and leave. It's it's just, well, the Pine Barrens, you know, you you were They're there. They're creepy. Harry. It's yeah. a creepy on its own. You don't need any Bigfoot or Jersey Devil to, to yep. heighten mm-hmm. that. But The stories um, that I'd love Betty to hear. Nathan, one of the things that has always resonated with me is the color of the eye shine that you talk about. And that, I find that so fascinating because, you know, yes, I believe it is flesh and blood, but to have these eyes illuminate from within and be different colors, yeah. I thought Eddie might enjoy that story. Wow. The the only colors I've ever seen personally is red. Okay. Uh, and that was, that was in Kentucky. And uh, it was sort of similar to your, your story with the, the girl passing out next to you. I was standing with Greg Lambert. He was he was looking in front of me, and I was looking in front of him, sort of. And uh, it, it was across the ravine. We were the group of us was sitting up at the top, and there. I don't know why Greg and I walked down the path below everybody. So we we went down this logging trail, logging trail past where the group was, and we're looking out across the across the the, the ravine, and just shooting the breeze, talking, because nothing was really going on. And all of a sudden, the eyes just lit up red and then went away. And it took everything I had not to fall flat on my face. It was the only time I've ever been doing anything other than that day in in New York that got you weak in the knees. Got me weak in the knees, and I almost went down. Yeah, I I had to grab a hold of him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but that was red. And, but uh, we've had reports, Charles, uh, who I I believe everything the man says. Uh, he had one that it actually it it was white, and it would actually light up the tree. He could see it move its its head, like it, and the light was coming out of its eyes, and it was white, oh, and it would actually light up the tree. Yeah. No, he told Which, that story. I have not experienced that, but I, no. you know, no. I look forward to the time when I can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so, I think it would be so fun to try to come bring both worlds together. Yeah. And see what we can get. So we'll have to yeah. we'll have to plan when it gets a little bit warmer. I'm not a yeah. cold weather person when it comes to yeah. doing, and they, neither are the squatches anyhow. Yeah. But we'll plan something that we can get together and. Uh, and hopefully get out Absolutely. there and compare. I heard the sounds fantastic with uh, Eric Mintel in mm-hmm. to the Beast of Bray Road. Betty, you would love that. I think that would be a great one to do one day because wow. that's the report of the dog man. And yeah. Yeah. people get evidence all the time out there. I mean, it's... it's That even has the ghost fog too, that 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 eerie the fog, the mist. That's yeah, the, the mist. mist that come in. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've taken Eric and his team out to the Pine Barrens a few times now, and uh, they were blown away. They were totally blown away by the activity that we had within a few minutes, getting the whoops and the conversation we had with a, a squatch. That's and then where I got would my- knock. Hmm? That's remember I sent you the uh, the audio of the tree knocks that happened in the Pine Barrens. That I I just left my recorder run all night. Mm. And, oh yeah. And- what a neat place that is. It's it's spooky. Oof. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's where some of the folklore comes from, of course, with the Jersey Devil. And I have always said it's, you know, people having encounters with Bigfoot and not realizing it. But mm-hmm. again, I'm open to having oh. that experience as well. So if you're if you're out there, JD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so where where can people find you give us your information so we can share that with the viewers you you so mentioned you can to our facebook page uh, paranormal investigators of new england 
or directly to our website at pi-ne.org. But if you Google Paranormal Investigators of New England, we will pop right up. Awesome. Great. Well, hey, this has been fun, I have to say. I, yeah. Uh, it's I great. Our, Thank I you. I enjoyed our conversation. And it was lovely to meet you, Betty. And Karen, great Thank to see you. And Dan again. Yeah, and definitely. Very much looking forward to having you join us in Pennsylvania. So the invitation is open, of course, for the mm -hmm. expedition. Fantastic. And uh, I'll be there. And oh, Betty, you're going to come too. Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, there you go. I, you were saying earlier, didn't want to. You were we're sure. <laughs> we retired. That, that small group too. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, well, we can do that first. That's sure. going to be pre-expedition. Yes, yeah, no, because my my June expedition is here in the Pine Barrens. Pennsylvania is right. not to the fall, so we'll get together and, some... and do something in in the middle somewhere. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. And, yeah, thank you. It's been fun. And yeah. uh, don't forget to give us a like and a share and a follow if you're depending on what you're viewing. And please, you know, follow these ladies on their Facebook page. Yeah. And uh, check them out as well. And remember share to use along. code STP10 at checkout if you're at yetibars.net. And thanks to our friends at Black Rifle Coffee Company for keeping us charged and ready to go squatching. So, Nathan? Yeah. Hey, thanks for squatching. Like my new shirt? Yeah. Big foot. <laughs> Did you see the latest email from Todd? Well, from Phil? No. He sent the next section of uh, conversation to Todd. So I'm hoping he checks us out and uh, decides he wants to talk to us. But that would be cool. Yeah. Any kind of publicity is good publicity, right? Even if Absolutely. It even if it gets us, it gets people angry at us. But pardon me. Less money is always good, right? Good, but that makes number twenty on on Spotify and on Apple Tunes and stuff. You know, give the viewers something to listen to while they're driving around. The and viewers it, something to listen to. Keep it, which gets me to my next point: that you know how we wait till the end to say thanks for squatching subscribe share like all that good stuff say it at the beginning we should say that at the beginning well, how you, you feeling are, you i like shit man the truck ran over me again man again it's the fucker backed up this time i think <laughs> it just isn't looking good tonight but it'll have to do it looks fine it's fine okay it's fine does it looks normal the lighting okay yeah i think so I turned. That. Did it make my lighting better since I turned? Yeah. It felt like this the light was always hitting me on the side. Now it's... No, I love it. I mean, the the angle and everything is great. Andy was here and we're talking. I'm trying to finish up as we're talking. I hit save and it crashed on me. Hmm. And so I had to, you know, restart it. And the funny thing is, it, I'm glad it did because I had saved it at the as the wrong file. <laughs> I got to get me a new camera. I just so, keep looking at how fuzzy I am compared to you. Uh, yeah, my my I wasn't I wasn't Santa worthy this year though. Wow. Yeah, I want to travel. The only problem is I don't want to leave the house. So how does that work? Yeah, that's your thing. You don't want to leave the house. <laughs> nice. Well, that's where we're going in April to California to the wedding. Yeah, and extend the trip a couple of days, and I'm going to take her to the Joshua Tree. It's only a couple of hours away from San Diego. There you go. So I wanted to go back to your text, though. Um, uh oh, oh no! What did I text? Yeah, should I send the link? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, you you want to open though before we let them in? Yeah, good idea. I mean, you can invite them. You don't have to let them in right away, right? Right. That way, that way they can get nervous. I'm going to send the link. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> All right. Here we go. As I pick my nose. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. well, well, at least you're not hacking up a lung tonight. No, it's not quite as bad. All right. We're recording. We're not no. live. No. Everything's good. Just take a breath. <laughs> um, welcome back to How's Watch it? Talks Podcast. Let's try it again. Ready? <laughs> you paused too long there i didn't pause at all <laughs> you, you started the pause i don't know hello daniel son <laughs>
<laughs> hey, thanks for squatching. Let's get that out of the way early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring Betty on and we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, they're saying address not found. Keen oh. EVT. Well, if I would have spelt it right, she would have gotten the link. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad at least uh, one of us is able to know what's going on. Too bad it's not one of us. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> and that's what we do. We, uh, we do the Bigfoot thing, but then we've also branched out into some of the paranormal aspects. Wonderful. I love it. I love connecting the two. The last time when we were out with Andy in the Pine Barrens there, we saw a Tic Tac. So now we're looking for UFOs, too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yep. My wife just saw another one yesterday, two days ago. Andy was just here. He's a director of the Pinelands Adventures. And he stopped by on his Hi. way back home. So, yeah, we were with, uh, it was Terry and Heather. We were waiting back at the campfire and they saw it. It was it was pretty intense. But yeah, she saw one uh, I think yesterday across the street at work. At, oh, no uh, kidding! Yeah, it came flying up on a on an airliner. She said it flew, it caught up to it real fast, and then as soon as it got near the tail, it went the complete different direction and was just gone. I spelled uh, it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's why my phone's lighting up again. AOL. Who uses AOL anymore? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, what, he was right about that. Mailer Damien. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I'm going to welcome you both to the show, and then we'll pick it up from there. Um, just thought maybe you would take a moment and have you both introduce yourselves or start with, you want to start with you, Karen? Is that okay? Since sure, sure. Okay. Um, Hi there. Um, my name's Karen. Well, I'm not, I didn't do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's. Thanks. I'm glad. I am glad this is taped, and you're going to edit it. I am. Don't worry. You will. You will look and sound great. Thanks for checking out this episode of Squatch Talks podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, and give us a like, and stay tuned for more exciting stories on Squatch Talks.